Well, welcome back to Algebra 1. We've learned how to solve our first equations, you know, and we're going to go into more complicated equations as we go down the road here. And in this lesson, we want to talk about what do you do when you have an equation that involves an absolute value. It's one of those things that trips up a lot of students, and you'll get it on a test sooner or later. So what if you have an equation like absolute value of z plus 10 uh, is equal to 28? Now we'll take a simple one at first. You want to get z by himself. That's what you really want to do to solve for what z is. But you have this plus 10 here, so we're going to do the same thing we always do. We'll subtract 10 from both sides. So we'll have the plus 10 minus 10, and then we'll have the 28 minus 10. So on the left-hand side, the 10s go away, giving you 0. So you have absolute value of z is equal to what is 28 minus 10? It's a straight subtraction. That's just going to be 18. Now, a lot of students don't know what to do when you hit this point. Now, this is not saying that z is equal to 18, okay? If the absolute value bars were not here, then yeah, you've finished the problem. But what it's saying is that the absolute value of z is 18. And if you remember back, I'll do a quick little review. If you remember back, the absolute value of 3, we said, was 3. And if you don't remember this stuff, go back to the section on absolute value and, and watch that. The absolute value of negative 3 is what? positive 3. The absolute value of negative 17 is 17. The absolute value of 24 is 24. What do you do when you see this absolute value sign? Basically what you do is you take away the sign, throw it away in the trash can, and the answer is just whatever the number is without the sign. If it's a positive number, the answer is just the number. If it's absolute value of a negative number, the, um, you just get the number back without the sign. So what this is basically saying is when you have an absolute value here, there are really two values that will work for z. <clears throat> and I'll just write them down. z can be 18, but z can also be negative 18. And make sure you understand that. This is actually the answer that you would circle down in your paper. Because what you've solved the equation down to this point, and you've got absolute value of z is equal to 18. And what that means is if you stick this value in here, 18, what is the absolute value of 18? Well, it's 18. What if you take the negative 18 and stick it in here? What's the absolute value of negative 18? It's also positive 18. So you see there's two values that work for z here. When you, your variable is wrapped up in an absolute value, what it basically means is you're always going to get two answers. One of them is going to be the positive value, and one of them is going to be the negative value. Because the absolute value strips away the sign. So there's always two values that are going to satisfy this and, and make it work. Let's solve another problem and you'll see how it, how it works out. But basically that's what you're going to do every time here for every one of these problems. Absolute value of y plus negative 1 is equal to 1. We want to get y by himself. So we have this nasty old negative 1 here. We're going to add 1 to both sides uh, to get rid of him. So we'll add 1 to the side and we'll add 1 to the other side. Now on the left hand side this goes to 0. So you have absolute value of y equals, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. So now you're down to this point, and you see that you haven't solved for y. You've solved for the absolute value of y, so all you need to do is remember that that means I get two answers. y can be 2, and y can be what? Negative 2. These are the two answers, and the reason is because if I stick 2 in here, absolute value of 2 gives me 2. If I stick negative 2 in here, absolute value of negative 2 also gives me 2. So those two values, two separate solutions work. Now in all the previous equations we've had, there's only been one value of the solution that works for any of the, those things that we solved before. But when you have an absolute value, you actually have two solutions that work. And sometimes in algebra you're going to get that, that happen. It's going to happen sometimes where you have uh, more than one solution to the problem that you're solving. So you kind of have to get used to that idea. We'll do one last problem here just to illustrate. Negative absolute value of x plus 2 close parentheses, is equal to negative 6. Now we want to um, solve this. Obviously we want to get this absolute value of x all by himself, but we have the negative 1 out here, so we need to distribute it in here uh, and distribute it in here. Now the negative times the absolute value of x is just going to be negative absolute value of x, and then the negative times the 2 uh, is just going to be negative 2, so we'll write it as minus 2 is equal to negative 6. Now we want to get this by himself. First we have to handle the negative 2. So we will add 2 to both sides. Minus 2 plus 2, we'll add it to that side. Negative 6 plus 2, we'll add it to that side. On the left hand side this goes to 0, so all I have is negative absolute value of x 
And on the right-hand side, I have negative 6 plus 2. And if you remember, when you add negative positive number like that, you subtract them. So 6 minus 2 is 4. And the sign of this goes with the larger absolute value, which is negative. So you have negative 4. Negative absolute value of x is equal to negative 4. Now we're close. Remember, when you have a negative sign in front of the variable you want, you can move him to the other side and effectively make him positive by doing what? Adding the opposite. So we can actually add the absolute value of x. Remember, I told you, you can do anything you want, as far as addition and subtraction, to an equation, as long as you do it to both sides. You see here, I've added the absolute value of x here, and I've added the absolute value of x there. So I've really caused the equation to remain unchanged. But on the left-hand side, negative absolute value of x plus absolute value of x, those go away to zero. And on the right-hand side, I'm just going to have the negative 4 plus absolute value of x. Now I'm getting close. Notice I have made this positive now, which is what I want. I want to get rid of the negative 4, so I'll add 4 to both sides. I'll add 4 to the left, and on the right, I will also add 4, just like this. Now, the reason I'm doing that is so these go away, the negative 4s go away, or the 4s go away. On the left, I have a 4, and on the right, I have absolute value of x. If you want to turn that around, you can say that um, absolute value of x is equal to 4. Now you're down to the same you know, end game here. And so you've almost, you're almost finished. What you need to remember is when your variable, when you've isolated it and it's got an absolute value bar, you know that you have two solutions. x can be positive 4, x can also be negative 4. And those are the two answers. And that, the reason is because if I stick 4 in there, I get a positive answer of 4. And if I stick negative 4 in here, absolute value gives me that. Also, you can take either one of these and stick them into the original equation, and they will also work. Let's do that really quickly. If we take 4 up here, this makes it 4. Absolute value makes it 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. The negative makes it negative 6. That matches. If I stick the negative 4 up here, absolute value will make it positive 4. Plus 2 will be 6, and then the negative here will make it negative 6. So no matter what value of these I put, I always satisfy my equation. So this equation has two solutions. And that's just something you have to deal with. I wanted to show you how to handle absolute values. Make sure you can handle um, these types of problems. Solve them yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue learning how to solve equations of different types in algebra.